Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's just take a look at how companies like GitHub, for example, make beautiful images which appear when you share the links on social media. Now, this is something which we have also done on CodeDAM for a few videos, for a few course items. I'm going to show you how to make this for your own website to make it a better experience for people who are trying to share things from your website. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. Now, first things first, First, let me just tell you what I mean when I say we get beautiful images from GitHub when you share something on social media. For this, I'm going to open Facebook's Open Graph Debugger, which is just a tool for seeing information on how people or how websites appear when you share their link. For example, if I just add github.com slash code damn slash code, you're going to see this is what the open graph image of GitHub looks like, right? GitHub generates this image on the fly, which has a repository name, organization name, description, contribution contributors, issues, stars, forks, and the logo of the company, right? So all of this is done by GitHub on the fly. You can see this section is a stat, which is dynamic in nature. So this is actually a nice thumbnail instead of no thumbnail or a static thumbnail, which you can provide. Similarly, if I go ahead and share the paste, the first link, the link to the first video of this course in CodeDAM, you're going to see the open graph image, which gets generated is also dynamic in nature. It consists of plays. It consists of that information, which includes the thumbnail. It includes the duration of the video, the views, the comments, our logo the name of the video, the title and the kind of the course item which is being shared. Again, we do this something similar to GitHub. So I'm going to show you how we exactly do this and how you should do it. So first things first, let's understand how this actually works. So you see, in order to make it work, you have to specify an OG image tag, which needs to be image to show when the preview is being shared or when the link is being shared on social media. So for example, if you go on to this page, this image right here, you can see that there's a very high quality image, which you can see. And this is what our open graph image is for that particular page. But you see right here that this is actually a static Im image, right? This is not a dynamic image. It's not of HTML or anything. It just, it's just a static image right here. Now, the way you build these images, is that you build a web page you actually build a web page which consists of all of these elements right that means you have created a web page if I tell you I need to create a web page exactly like this you would be able to do that right because it's simple to create a web page with a video and a background of gray then you know a title then a thumbnail placeholder a placeholder for showing images and some stats once you have a web page like this as you can see what GitHub also does, all you have to do is take a screenshot of this web page on the fly. So let's say we have a web page codedam.com slash generate OG image just for the sake of this discussion. Let's say this accepts certain arguments. So I can say title as hello world and this will appear, this hello world will appear over here, right? If I, if my script is customized, right? The HTML generated would include hello world from here. I can then say and type is equal to video or lab or anything which I want. In this case, this would be video. So you can see video would appear here. Then I can specify a description that this video is about this and that, whatever that is, right? And all of this, doing all of this renders an image, not renders an HTML, not an image, an HTML that showcases all of this on a single page. The second step is that you take this URL and you use a software like Puppeter, which GitHub also uses, which we also use. We pipe it to Puppeter and we take a screenshot of that HTML, right? Wurzel, for example, also uses this and GitHub also mentions that this is not a novel idea. It's, it's been in a while for a long time, but this is a good way to generate dynamic images out of HTML and the simplest way also, like you don't want to install a lot of image generation libraries and, you know, create images on the fly because they are not the best idea for the most part once when you have simple ways like this. But, but once you image, once you generate that image, there's another step which you need to take care of. How do you deliver that image, right? Because there is one part which is generating that image, you know, generating that HTML page. The second part is taking the screenshot through Puppeter, which again adds on to the time. The third part is now how do you deliver this generated image? For example, what we could do is say generate OG. We can have two endpoints. One is generate OG website, which actually renders the HTML. And the second web point endpoint could be generate OG image, which takes all of these parameters, visits OG website, 
takes a screenshot and sends the response as an image, right? Now, OG website obviously would load much more faster than OG image. Why? Because OG image has to go to that website, launch Puppeter, take a screenshot and then send it back. So obviously it's not very economical to use this as your OG image URL, right? Because whenever any social media accesses this URL, you're going to do a full round trip of, uh, you know, generating the image and then screenshotting it, generating the HTML document, screenshotting it and sending the image, right? You want a smaller way a shorter way. One way to do that is that you can save the generated image on some cloud provider like S3, for example. So now instead of sending a dynamic link as a setting a dynamic link as an OG image generator, what you do is you generate the image and store it on the S3 bucket. Now you have an image on S3, which you can serve as an OG image, which kind of is dynamic in nature. You technically, you know, started with a dynamic image, but made it static after some time. Second approach, which we take as of now is that we serve it via a CDN, right? So you see that we are using images.vserve.nl and we use the image generated image, generate dynamic OG, and then serve it on a CDN, which has an expiry set, right? So this image expires in a while. I mean, that is required because we need to update these stats every once in a while. And that also means that this image serves fast because this is being served from a CDN, right? So we are not generating the web page on every refresh, on every render. So that serves the best of the both world. I sincerely believe that GitHub is also doing the same thing. I'm not sure if they do use a CDN or not, if they are just directly generating every single image on the fly. They say that generating an image takes 280 milliseconds on average, but they would probably go or, you know, just have a lot more, lot less time if they just also cache it for, let's say, a minute or an hour or so on. But it depends on their own use case. Maybe they want fresh data all the time. That's not very important for us in our case. So that is it. But uh, yeah, the first step is to generate the HTML structure of what you think should be a good OG image and then populate it dynamically through parameters, take screenshot, upload it on S3 or, you know, just serve it via a CDN, an image CDN. So that is all for this video. Hopefully you learned something new in this one. If you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. That is all for this one. I'm going to see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching.